Sometimes it seems like the 21st century is the mother of all current ideas. However, there are notions we take as relevant, cutting edge or contemporary that perhaps are not so new. Let's see. We're used to learning that women perform the roles of nurses and aides in both world wars, and since the 70s onwards it became gradually more usual to see women in the army. However, already in 1914, in World War I, Russia deployed female combat troops in large numbers. There was a well-known contingent of light cavalry in the Cossack Regiment, led by a female colonel. Famous Maria Boshkareva was a commander of the 1st Women Battalion of Death. They didn't provide the propaganda value that was expected of them, but they set one of the first precedents for women in combat since ancient warfare. Long before the boom of Silicon Valley, Steve Jobs, Google and Facebook, Thomas Alva Edison invented the first industrial research laboratory in Menlo Park, New Jersey. These offices were a place to just do, where creativity was nurtured and fostered. Employees were expected to manage their own time and to think outside the box. Edison ruled over them hard, but he set the conditions for every employee to feel that they were accomplishing something every day, rather than just being part of a long manufacturing chain. This was the first creative hub in modern history, a business concerned with creating knowledge and then controlling its application. The obsession to look good is not a modern syndrome. We associate tanning beds with Wall Street sharks in the 90s, but already in the 1930s there were solariums in the coastal towns of England and the US. Equipped with UV ray lamps and heaters, these solariums offered the beach experience in winter. Closer to today's spa centres, these solariums were built in conservatories or sunrooms, and they offered a warm indoor alternative for leisure time. Whether they were healthy or not, that's a whole different subject. When the internet wasn't even a dream at the end of the 30s, the first London Marriage Bureau opened its doors. Candidates looking for their perfect match would fill in a confidential form stating their preferences and their key criteria. Interests, age, religion, that sort of thing. Then the Bureau would match one candidate with another and arrange a date. We don't know what their success rate was, but we know that before Tinder and online dating, these offices worked as business cupids for more than six decades. Humans have kept animals as pets since ancient times. A body dated 7500 BC was found in Cyprus buried with a cat. That's the first record we have of pets. Egyptians already put accessories on cats and dogs, according to the mummies that have been found. So, whenever you see a dog with a woolly walking down the street, don't think of our times as so bizarre. Animal fashions have always been on trend. We know you know that fortune tellers have always existed. But did you know that television wasn't the first mass media they appeared on? There were fortune tellers in film too. Shh, listen. This month we'll see more jobs going because of improved trade conditions in this country. If it sweeps out across the palm, then you will travel and die abroad, or else we get the artistic temperament, fits of depression. Libra means the balance. Sagittarians are at home in many and varied jobs, as you see. Like the bees, they are steady, industrious, plodding workers. I wonder how many of you are in the right job. This remarkable instrument can taste and register on this dial the flavors of different kinds of fruits. We'll convert the taste of this apple into sound, coming from this loudspeaker. In the recent Future Fest in London, an invention was showcased that decoded and digitised basic flavours so that then they could be reproduced in a synthetic tongue, in order to feel flavours without ingesting any food. But we have found that in 1933, the New York Electrical Society had already made their own version. The lowly lemon, with all its citric acid, is the piccolo of the fruit family. After the 60s, there was growing awareness of ecology and the need for recycling. However, from ancient times, recycling was common practice during war to fight and prevent shortage of materials. During the two world wars, governments invested in campaigns to encourage it because it increased the chance of victory. As an example of direct recycling, German helmets were turned into cooking pots at the end of World War II. Tell us which other not-so-modern concepts you can think of by leaving a comment below.